Quick Tick Quick Tick coming to you from Saskatchewan here today with a Quick Tick Quick Tick Tooney, where you get $2 worth of my opinions because two cents don't buy very much anymore. Today, we're talking about these two and their ridiculous adventure on which they blow taxpayers' money and accomplish absolutely nothing. They actually remind me of two other guys. Now, normally Quick Tick would go on cussing and swearing about a whole bunch of different things, uh, but let's just keep this simple. Raspberries. In April of 2020, a madman in Portapique, Nova Scotia killed 22 innocent Canadians, 13 by shooting them and nine by lighting their houses on fire. So this guy had no firearms license, had illegally smuggled firearms from the U.S. into Canada, and the RCMP had been warned about him several times, and nothing was done. So instead of identifying gaps in our policing and justice systems, Justin Trudeau says this. We are closing the market for military-grade assault weapons in Canada. We are banning 1,500 models and variants of these firearms by way of regulations. And tries to convince you that we have a country full of automatic assault-style weapons, which we haven't had in Canada since the 70s. We have some of the strictest firearms laws in the world already here in Canada. Then Bill Blair says this. I want to assure hunters and farmers and target shooters in this country that nothing that we are doing today or will do in the future is intended to interfere with this lawful, responsible, and legal activity. Well, my friends, unfortunately, the only people it will affect are legal and law-abiding citizens. Because people like this and people like this have absolutely no interest in what's legal or not. They are going to acquire whatever it is that they want off of the black market just like the crazed man in Nova Scotia did, and carry out whatever it is they're planning on doing. So instead of spending billions of taxpayers' dollars trying to chase down legal and responsible firearms owners, why don't we spend that money into border enforcement, gang crime units, and local police so that we can actually help enforce the laws that we already have? Can anybody tell Quick Dick how it makes sense that our government, on one hand, is chasing down legal, licensed, vetted firearms owners in Canada, right down to airsoft enthusiasts, and punishing them by trying to take their property away from them, and on the other hand, they're actually reducing sentencing for serious crimes in Canada, like in Bill C-22? Does this make sense to anybody? Do you know what really barbecues my chops? is when you have people that are part of anti-gun lobby groups that say garbage like this. I don't know about the Canada that some people live in, but my Canada doesn't need a gun for self-defense uh, in any way, shape, or form. It just, it just is foolish, and yet we hear that all the time. Do you want to tell that to the homeowner in Black Falls that would have been beaten to death by a baseball bat by a meth head that had been released by the RCMP had he not had a fucking shotgun to protect himself and his family? You know, the days of, you know, hunting for your family and providing for your family, the days of the, you know, of the pioneer lifestyle, they're, they're long since gone. Well, I got news for you, partner. Not only in Saskatchewan here do we hunt to bring our friends and families together, but we hunt to keep our deep freezes full. And we also hunt to ensure that we don't have an overpopulation of wild species here. Now, do you know why you don't want an overpopulation of wildlife in a specific area like this? It's because it puts our crops at risk. It puts our feed for our livestock at risk. And it also puts said wildlife at risk because they become very susceptible to disease. And when they start spreading disease through a large population, they start dying slow, horrible deaths. Some starve to death, some freeze to death, and some are actually eaten while they're still alive for days by predators. We also hunt here for humane reasons. Yeah, I mean, to a certain extent it happens, but let's be real. People do not go and, you know, shoot 20 deer and feed their family venison every night. First of all, the family would reject that because venison's not that great. I'm sorry. Did you just say venison is not that great? Just as I suspected, you're cooking challenged. Let Quick Dick help you out. Now, all venison recipes begin with one great thing. A hunt. The hunt. Start by finding evidence of a big buck. Get settled in the deer blind, take a selfie, and then take down a beauty white tail. Then of course you got to have a story about how you took him down. So I started sitting in there at about six o'clock this morning there, and then I was getting impatient, it's getting cold, I was getting ready to leave, and then he 
He hopped in right over there and just fucking dropped him. 200 yards down there. Tracked him down there. He was laying dead. Long shot. Right on the money. He's a good day, boys. Good day. So then you skin that beautiful bastard out and you debone him with a Saskatchewan legend like BMA. Then, of course, there's only one thing left to do. You guessed it. Welcome to Cooking with Quick Dick, where you teach people who don't know what the hell they're talking about how to cook wild game. Today on Cooking with Quick Dick, we will be making a Saskatchewan pull. This is not to be confused with a Saskatchewan yank, a Saskatchewan tug, it is a Saskatchewan pull. The first thing you're gonna need is a saucepan with a questionable handle on it so that it's gonna make it really tough to balance our in the roux barbecue sauce when it comes off the stove. That's what we're making first, folks. Step one is to mince one onion. Then you need three cloves of garlic, and I'm not talking that Chinese garlic that you can get. I'm talking you've got to find yourself a good, serious, homegrown garlic dealer. Then you're going to need some rhubarb. Now, I'm not talking about this rhubarb. Sorry, Morty. I'm talking this rhubarb. So chop up two cups of it, then we're going to get everything else ready to go before we start. You're going to need three quarters of a cup of bourbon. Real nice. Add a half cup of product of Canada tomato paste, a third of a cup of product of Canada apple cider vinegar, and a cup and a half of Canadian made ketchup. Then you put in a quarter of a cup of W sauce. I'm not gonna try and say the name because the British will just say, I'm butchering their language. Two tablespoons of hickory liquid smoke and a half cup of brown sugar. Then you're gonna grab yourself a teaspoon of this. Burnt Canoe. It's the best steak seasoning you're gonna find in Saskatchewan. Ground and blended here in Saskatchewan by none other than CJ Katz. It's fantastic. Whole teaspoon of it right into the mix. So get it in there and then you just stir this bastard. Okay, now get your sweet pan rolling on your sweet Maiden Canada stove and we're gonna give her just a little bit of splash of good old Maiden Saskatchewan canola oil so that nothing burns. Rhubarb, garlic, onions in. Oh yeah, bourbon in. Look at that, look at the color in that. I don't know, is that what you're supposed to say on cooking shows? <laughs> okay, we're gonna cook off that bourbon a little bit here, folks. All right, bourbon's starting to cook down. Rhubarb's starting to soften. Let's go to medium heat. Get the rest of your sauce. Bring her on in. Then you're gonna stir that bastard up without slopping over the edges onto your stove. Bring your sauce to a boil. Okay, as you can see now, we're getting some nice stove and fridge splatter here, so we're gonna go ahead and put this bastard down below. Simmer that. We're gonna stir it, cover it with a lid. Now while it's simmering, do your dishes, you slob. Time to check it. Oh yeah. Pull it off, put it in the fridge overnight. Get up the next morning, you're feeling the effects of that bourbon a little bit too much. Get your smoker rocking and rolling at about 150 or on smoke boost. Now, you remember last night when we took the entire back strap off one side of our white tail and marinated it? I kind of do a little bit. Anyways, we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it on our smoker at about 150 or smoke boost for an hour. Put a pan under that bastard so you don't lose any of the goodness out of them back straps. One hour. Do not throw out your remaining marinade. We're gonna use it to cook with yet. Get your barbecue sauce out of the fridge. Then blend all the goodness together. The only place Chunky belongs is in peanut butter. Go until you can smell the motor on your blender. Whew, that's done. And you put your sauce wherever the hell you want. If you got an empty old ketchup bottle like I did my last stuff in, that's where you can put it. If you got a couple of mason jars and watch Pinterest too much, I guess that's where you can put it. Fun thing about this sauce is if you want a little more tart, you use the greener rhubarb. If you want a little more sweet, you use the redder rhubarb. You can see the last stuff I made is a little more red. It's fun. What are we gonna eat with the pulled venison? Well, my friends, go out to the bin before you see yellow peas and grab yourself a five gallon pail of clean yellow peas. Set your Instant Pot to saute and add a splash of canola oil. One minced onion, 
three cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of red chili flakes, and saute them till they're fragrant. Add three cups of chicken stock or beef stock, whatever you prefer. Three cups of hard yellow peas right from your bin. Stir them in, put the lid on, and set it for 45 minutes at high pressure. Okay, now tomatoes are still a little out of season here right now, so I'm gonna use canned tomatoes, diced, and make sure that they say product of Canada. Have a close look and make sure the quinoa you're putting in here is made in Canada. Saskatchewan or Manitoba, preferably. One cup over the top. Set your pressure cooker for five more minutes, then dump the contents out into a large mixing bowl. And give that bastard a stir. Cover it, put that bastard in the fridge. Now let's not forget about those back straps on the smoker. Oh, look at those glorious bastards. Okay, next step. Remember I said to keep that marinade? Well, I meant it. Never throw anything away. Put her in a bowl. Now mom always taught me to wash the bag. <laughs> How's that single use for you there, Trudeau? Take a cup of your in the root barbecue sauce, put her in there. Go about half a can of beer. The rest is pour le chef. Give that bastard a stir. Back straps in the pan that caught all that lovely juice. Sauce in. Oh yeah, we're getting there. Cover the bastards with foil. Add foil to your shopping list. Put a probe in, smoker to 200, and close the lid and go do other shit. Okay you guys, we're at 185 internal. Typically I would never take venison that high, but when you're pulling it, it's a different game. Look at that glorious bastard. Now, grab two forks and shred it. Now, I never usually take venison over 140 internal because I like a little bit of pink in it to taste that deer, but when you're doing a pull with it, look at that smoke ring we got with that first hour we had on that smoker. This is gonna be good. Look at that pile of gloriousness. All right, next step is to put it back into a smaller foil container. In the Rue barbecue sauce. Now, you don't want too much. You just want a nice thick consistency, all right? Stir that up. Add some of the juice from the other pan. Recover the bastards using the same foil that you had on the other pan. Not only does it save the environment, but it makes up for the fact that you don't have any left right now. Back on the smoker. <laughs> Let's get this in us. A little bit of mayo. Ooh, a little more bin in the roux barbecue. Piping hot pulled venison, oh yeah. Fresh zucchini from the garden and just a little bit of lime juice for the pea salad. Fancy bastards think I got fresh limes? Come on. So that's just what I did with the backstrap. I've eaten this guy's liver, his heart, whatever isn't prime cuts of meat. We've turned into some pretty good jerky and sausage. I'll show you how to do that in an upcoming cooking with Quick Dig maybe this hunting season. Are we done? Nope, you're not done yet. You load that bastard up in your pickup truck and you bring him down to Cuss Creek Taxidermy, South Theodore, Saskatchewan. Oh. Ah, there he is. Ha. Take him home and put him on your wall where you can be reminded every day of the beauty of the wildlife that we have here in Saskatchewan. And not only that, but so you can think of him and thank him every time you get a full belly off him. Thanks, buddy. You're delicious. This has been Cooking with Quick Dick, teaching activists that venison is pretty damn good. So my message to people like Alan Drummond is to pump your brakes. You need to get to know a few more people in Canada because you don't speak for anybody around Tufnell. <laughs> My message to Justin Trudeau and Bill Blair is to stop pissing away taxpayers' money on a stupid buyback program. Go chase criminals, not legal firearms owners. My message to Canadians who don't already have one is to go take a firearms course and get a possessions and acquisitions license. You will find that it is not easy to get and that you can't just walk down the street today and buy a firearm. Furthermore, you'll find that we don't have fully automatic military-grade assault weapons in Canada. Unless a criminal smuggled it in. So let's work the criminals, not the law-abiding citizens.
This is Quick Dick McDick signing off, reminding you, responsible gun owners' impact on the legal system is minimal. So stop chasing us and go chase some criminals. We'll catch you next time.